So, without delay, let us now dive into the first session on interregional cooperation and, crucially, EU priorities. You're going to get a variety of complementary perspectives, national, European, regional and operational, from some very fine speakers. I'm going to welcome all four together. Can you please put your hands together and give a warm welcome to Dr. Bart van Bulhaus, who is Director for International Affairs at the Ministry of Infrastructure and the Environment. Welcome on stage. A warm round of applause, please. We've also got uh, Jean-Marc Venineau of DG Regio, European Commission. Thank you very much. He's also in the front row. You may take a seat. We have uh, Michiel Schaeffer, who is responsible for European cooperation, economic development and the labour market for the executive province of Gederland, the Netherlands. And finally, always my favourite to have another woman on the stage, we've got Anne Wetzel, who is director of the Europe Department, Eau de France, Nord, Pas de Calais in the Picardy region. So... Welcome all from the comparative luxury of your seat, Monsieur. <laughs> uh, let me turn to you first. Now, you've got two minutes. You're setting the tone. Thank you very much for everybody else. And if you could explain, in a nutshell, how Interreg Europe fits with the Dutch presidency priorities. Well, the short answer is it fits a lot. But uh, let me just say that I very much like the uh, statement, the bikes and the dikes and the circles. <laughs> say on behalf of the Dutch uh, presidency, I'll welcome in, um, in uh, Rotterdam, especially those of you who came from, uh, from Brussels. And as my Prime Minister, our Prime Minister has said today, we are all very much hit in the midst of the heart of, uh, of Europe. But life goes on and uh, let's pick up the, 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 the spirit. Your mic seems to be off, so we're talking okay. this one. So you missed all of it? <laughs> But he's, it's all right, he's wearing trainers, he can run fast, look. Okay, well, um, just making these remarks and, and quoting my, uh, our Prime Minister in, in, in his remarks that uh, we are hit in the midst of the heart of Europe today. And uh, on behalf of the Dutch Presidency, I really want to um, welcome you here in, um, in, in Rotterdam. And uh, quoting the, um, the, 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 the bikes and the dikes and the circular economy. It's all happening here in Rotterdam, in fact. Well, if you, the, the, the fit uh, between the presidency and, and Interreg, it's uh, here behind. Uh, we try to focus as much as possible on the, on the innovation, on growth and jobs, and climate and energy is in the heart of our uh, presidency. We think uh, um, uh, that Europe should be more than a legislative machinery. Uh, we focus a lot on what we call soft legislation, also on the green deals and in the, in the innovation deals and cooperation between the member states. And Interreg is all about this. Um, the, um, the resource efficiency, the circular economy, as I, uh, I mentioned, is one of the top priorities for our uh, presidency. If like, you want, I can say something uh, more about it. It was in, the, um, in, in June we, ha we hope to, to draw conclusions in the environmental in the Environmental Council, about recycling, about, uh, about pr pr procurement, very important, I think, for, um, for this audience here as well. If you, if you look at the, um, uh, at the projects in Interreg where, where Dutch uh, participants uh, uh, took, took place in day, the top three is climate, circular economy and, and smart mobility. Mm -hmm. So there you have to fit. Talking about um, smart uh, mobility, Smart and green mobility, that is uh, also a, a, a high priority for our, our presidency. In April, we will have all the transportation and environment ministers in, uh, in Amsterdam talking about it, autonomous driving, zero emissions, bringing to, the two together also on the city, on the city level. And, and here in Rotterdam in, in, in June, during the 10 days about the, the trans-European networks, the same will be in the focus, the investments in in uh, sustainable infrastructure and, and transportation. So, yes, it's a good fit. Okay, it's a good fit. And just, I have high hopes personally because all the sorts of events I moderate and campaigns I've run for the European Commission, lots of times uh, the Netherlands comes up as best practice in all sorts of different areas. So, um, so uh, I am enthusiastic and that's good to hear. I did have a couple of questions, but just time being what it is, I'm going to ask you one. And I think it might be one that reflects something that um, our participants would ask, which is there are obviously, Europe is awash with all sorts of support initiatives. Um, so how does Interreg Europe distinguish itself? How does it fit into those and how is it different, in a nutshell? 
Well, I think it's a good thing that it's related to the, to the priorities that, that, that mentioned. So it's not broad scope, but it's focus, focusing. And, and it's my dare hope that, uh, again, the circular economy will, in the hearts of many uh, projects, that will be brought forward by, uh, by participants. Because it's, the circular economy is not only a thing for, 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 for governments on the, on the central level. It should be based, and it's based by on what stakeholders and, and, and local governments are are doing and, and and the debate that we had in the in the environmental council in um, in 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 March about it was also focusing a lot on on, on, on two two issues the, uh, the, the the transfer of of, of knowledge the cooperation which is also in our benefits we like to say we are we are the um, the um, the, the um, circular economy hotspot in uh, in Europe mm -hmm. but also for us it's it's great and important to work also with with other parts of uh, other parts of, of Europe and the um, and the, the role of governments, all kinds of governments in, in in procurement, in green procurement, is extremely important. So that should in, inter interact uh, interact combined with with these priorities leverage a double outcome. I would, uh, okay. I would say. Okay. So it's good. So for what you're saying is that there is sometimes criticism that the EC is not, you know, the EU is not coherent enough, and you're saying there is clearly coherence here between the priorities and between interreg. That's Absolutely. that's what I'm picking up. Okay, let me just park that there because I'm going to turn to Michiel Scheffer. Um, and you are managing authority of the ERDF program for the East Netherlands. Um, I'd like to invite you to tell us whether, well, I think I hope you're going to say yes, whether cooperation is a priority for your region. I assume the answer is going to be yes. <laughs> and if it is, how you approach it and how you integrate it into your policy making. Well, we cooperate in all kinds of programs, in many challenges, we are a border region. Mm. Personally, I live 15, 15 minutes by bicycle from the German border. So we are very deeply uh, involved in cooperation with Germany, in the track A, for example. Um, keep in mind that the Rhine flows into the Netherlands where we live, so we have water from Germany, Switzerland, France, Belgium, Austria and Italy flowing into our province. So on circular economy and on environmental measures, it's, a, it's essential to work across the Rhine. Interact B is one of the instruments. And third example, we have invested a lot in new instruments, new financial instruments, for example, revolving funds for SMEs and, and sustainable energy. And we are looking for also for, corporate to, for cooperation to learn from other regions and to transfer maybe our well, modest learnings to others. Okay. So, and especially in Europe is, in, in my mind and our mind, the area of cooperation when it comes to learning. Mm -hmm. For those of the audience or uh, who might say, oh my God, this is just cooperation is great, but behind cooperation, it's terribly time consuming. It's a lot of hassle. I just really can't be doing it. What was your advice? What would you say to that? Well, it's not the European cooperation is not easy from, let's say, an administrative point of view. However, I've managed an Interact project myself, an Interact Europe project myself. If you, if you organize it well up front, you have an open discussion with the managing authority, with the GTS in Lille. Um, if you manage it well from the start on, it's, it's, a, it's a very doable thing. And be aware of public procurement, for example, in the project. But if you do it well and you don't manage anything with a shoebox, it's, it's, it's feasible. And the rewards are far more important than, well, the cost of the administration. Okay. So your key points are don't manage anything in a shoebox. I like that. <laughs> Normally people say silos. So don't manage in a shoebox and the rewards way outweigh the hassle yeah. is what you're saying. And always call in advance to the GTS if you have a question. Okay. Don't try to improvise yourself. Okay. Don't sit in a room. But I say that as a formal project manager. But I would say that also as a public official. Okay, all right, that's clear. Um, I rudely jumped over um, the gentleman on, uh, doctor, on the doctor's right, and I'm going to come back to you. So, Jean-Marc Vignoux, mm -hmm. um, let me turn the spotlight on to you. Now, can you uh, explain the main lines of the European com Commission's vision for uh, Interreg Europe? Can you give us that top-line view? Yeah. Um, well, in a nutshell, I would say that we are all facing globalization and uh, in various aspects, even the, even the, the, the less pleasant of them. And uh, I think there are two ways of facing it. One is to, locking door, to lock doors, because you think that uh, something that you, you are not really able to control and to master will be uh, the, the only way uh, in front of this challenge will be to, uh, to lock your doors. The other option is to open to the others and to try 
how together we, we can face the, the, the problems. And by far, I, I, would, uh, I would prefer this option of opening up the doors and trying to see how together we can cope with all those gl global uh, issues we, we, we have to face together. And I think Interreg Europe as such is one of the ways and one of the best ways to, to do it. You, you said it uh, in your introduction. It concerns the 28 uh, countries in Europe plus Norway and Switzerland. And we, have to, we, we just have simply to work together to find a solution to all those issues that at EU level, but not only at EU level, in fact. We have to find a solution, and this is the only way. I don't think that on our, on our own we'll be able to do anything against what we have to, to face today. And, uh, and, and that's it. I mean, th this is what, what we want to achieve with, uh, with, uh, with Interreg Europe. The problem is that there are only, I would say, uh, 700 to 800 people here. We still need to convince so many other people who have a role to play at any level, at so-called stakeholder level, level, but also at political level. And I think there's still a lot of, a lot of to do in, in, this, in this perspective. But this is the only way. And I think Interreg Europe has a full legitimacy to do it. It's only one, one small program, in, uh, and cooperation as a whole, in fact, is, is, is very little in, in our uh, cohesion policy. It's only 2% of the budget, if we take in financial terms. But I think they are, they are so important in, in, the, in the way we can hopefully a day uh, bring more coherence into what we are trying to, to do together and to, to find a solution to, to those uh, pressing challenges. That's all for me. So what you're, uh, and also what I effectively pick up is you're saying that everybody in this room, you said we're just sort of 700 and obviously there is an extended audience online are very valuable potential multipliers. Not yeah. only that the program exists yeah. and, and what it does, yeah. but as you say, they're just, well, for you it's unequivocal. There's no other way. We have to yeah. cooperate. That's, yeah. that's what we have on the table before us. Just very, very briefly, what impact do you expect Interreg Europe to have on regional and national programs that are financed directly by the ERDF? Well, you know, we, we introduced in the regulations, in the current regulations, this, uh, this direct link with uh, those so-called mainstream, mainstream national or regional programs. And that uh, this is maybe a big change as compared to the previous periods, that what will be developed uh, in the, in the Interreg Europe program has to uh, find an echo in the, in the national or regional programs. And this is for us, I'm not saying this is the way, but it's one of the possible ways to precisely amplify this mm -hmm. cooperation uh, uh, dimension of uh, of the projects and hopefully amplify the good results, the positive results. Of those projects would be likely to uh, to transfer to to the policies uh, in in, other, in in all countries concerned. And this is for us a way to also maybe convey the message that cooperation indeed is part of the or should be part upstream uh, of the design of the policy of the con uh, of the of the implementations of the policies and programs and so on. This cannot be something aside. It's part, again, it, it comes back to what I was saying earlier. It, it's part, of the, it's part of, the, of the whole picture. It's part of the, it's, it must be part of the policy. You cannot imagine that you're on your own in your region or your country. You have to, to, to compare with the others. You have to benchmark. You have to, to question what, what, do, what do the others do? Uh, how, how good I am, even though I'm convinced that I'm very good at doing whatever the sector, whatever uh, uh, activity I, I'm good at in my, in my country and region. Mm -hmm. Could I be better off with, with others? Mm -hmm. uh, does it make sense just to consider my, my, my spe specialization as my own property, not, not, in, not putting it in the big picture to make sure mm -hmm. that I really uh, am I, I'm able to compete in, in, in the global, uh, again, in the global competition uh, context, in the global context? So, I mean, this is what, what Inter Europe, in principle, should, should be able okay. to, to bring into the into the, the design and the implementation okay. of the policies. So I think you've touched on something you had sort of said to you. I talked to you. Oh, hassle. What would you say? But you know, the, the the value far outweighs it. Don't think in a shoebox. You're saying you've got to look out there. It's got yeah. to be smart. Don't just kind of yeah. have a tunnel approach. Yeah. So perfect opportunity to turn to you, Anne, because I would like to talk to you about specifically the implementation in practice. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? Clearly. Nobody's saying it's a piece of cake. Clearly, it's 
absolutely well worth it. What value do you think it brings to a region? What value do you think it brings to Europe? What can you tell us about implementation in practice? I think it's important to say that the uh, region uh, Haute-France, Nord-Pas-de-Calais, Picardie is managing four cooperation programs. Four. Four. Right. Uh, it means in a practical way, 80 people working each day of 50 nationalities for you. Uh, to um, manage, to implement the projects. It, uh, it's for a region 15 years of experience in this field. Um, we do it with the Walloon partners in an um, interesting tool, um, what we think is a stable tool, an efficient tool, cost-effective tool. I think it's important. And um, we manage um, one, almost 1 billion um, euros uh, for cooperation. And I think um, for us it's a responsibility that we find the, um, a high quality implementation for the project. And it means also that um, we do it in a closed and balanced way with all the partners, with the member states, with mm -hmm. the commission. And I think it's really important and it's based of course of, of trust too. Because um, um, it's extremely demanding, um, it must be, um, there's a lot of um, important values like transparency, like neutrality, like public uh, money spent in a, in a good way. Mm -hmm. And so we must build it also of trust. And I think something really important for us and I think for all cooperation, the cooperation world, I would say. Okay, so you, you're, you're really highlighting the words rigor and discipline. I mean, you're working, it's a real team effort, a team mm -hmm. of people with different nationalities and skills, and you need to make sure that all stakeholders within it are implicated and have that same kind of rigour. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and just to come, because I, I, I just sort of wanged and threw you off a bit there by asking you a question about uh, EC initiatives and how it fitted in, but I also wanted to ask on the back of you saying that um, this is a priority and, and the ways in which it is. I mean, what do you think, you know, what, what can the programme bring to your country? I mean, I, I come back to the same question I asked Anne. What is the value for regions and countries? Well, I think it's, it's twofold for us. It's uh, with, with the focus on, on this kind of issues, which mm -hmm. do matter for, for Europe as a whole, it's important to invest in it, or, uh, not only from, from our from the member state level, but also from the level of knowledge institutes so to invest for, let's say, the acceleration of this, this, this issues in Europe. That is one. But secondly, um, I know that organizations that are international active, they are far more innovative than, uh, mm -hmm. than others. So it's, it's great for, for cities, for knowledge institutes, for companies to, to do this kind of, of cooperation. Or, in, on, on the first side, if talking about circular economy, uh, it, might, it might look as a one-way street that we are sharing our knowledge with others, but it's always you get a lot of innovation mm -hmm. back for being active and working with, uh, with others. So that, that is, there are the two main reasons for us to, uh, to, to like this program. Okay, let me just park things there because we do have 10 minutes to take questions. I mean, obviously, we've just sort of thrown in with the really big picture. I think you can see some of the key themes that, that, that came up. Certainly nobody on this panel is um, negative about this programme. They are thoroughly <laughs> positive for all sorts of different reasons, reasons and they also come up with the same um, sorts of experiences in terms of implementation and what you need to watch out for. Anything that we've missed, anything that at this stage in that whole bigger picture and in the whole European vision for it, that you have a question on this, how it fits, anything about these four key thematic areas? No, do we have anything, anybody who's just sending in the most wonderful question on Twitter or Facebook? Um, no, everybody is currently uh, in the live Q&A with the uh, Interact uh, officers okay, here, but so they're following is. with one ear. Yeah, but I'll, I'll raise my hand if that happens. Okay, no, okay. I won't yet put the spotlight on anyone and force you to speak. I think you're all in listening mode for now. You were nodding very interestedly when the gentleman was talking here about those four particular areas and the specific benefits sort of at country level. Was there anything that you wanted to add? I mean, particularly as well in what you've seen in your experience as a managing authority. 
and outcomes of what you've seen? No, well, these are the four major challenges. Uh, we are, in our region and in many in Europe, we are facing a kind of jobless growth situation. Mm -hmm. So how to create jobs through innovation is an essential thing. Also the question, how to promote SMEs, but how to promote SMEs to be, get bigger, so to, to get from 20 people to 50 people employed. Yeah. Um, how to use challenges like climate change to mobilize innovation, to mobilize job creation is important. So all these things are addressed in our ERDF funding. Uh, but what we also look for is what just was said, well, one can learn so, mu so much from others. Yeah. Uh, and in so far, we come from a region that was very proud of doing things on their own. And we are moving to learning more to share with others and learning more to, to learn from others. Um, so we are, we are strengthening our link with Nordrhein-Westfalen. We are good in experimenting, they are good in scaling up. Uh, we hope to strengthen a relationship with Nord Calais. Uh, we look for a stronger partnership in the Italian region, so that basically we get across Europe five or six good friends, okay. where we basically get a relationship in which we have projects, mm -hmm. but the relationship is key, and well, funding helps to do projects, but not, let's say, we do projects and then we lose a relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's interesting because what you said in the relationships that you have is that you bring to the table something specific and then you might find that another region, another member state yeah. brings something else, which is the interest there, which is what you're saying. It's that learning. It's not just learning along uh, the same theme. It could be somebody brings something different to the table, which is the value. Mm -hmm. Also, let me just ask, you said you popped in and said, uh, oh, make sure that you pick up the phone, contact us, don't sit there and try and figure it all out and improvise. Is there anything specific that you were thinking about or referring to you that people get in a bit of a pickle about or, or was it just a general advice? Well what I discover as a politician being a consultant on these projects before that is that politicians are some, some, sometimes afraid of getting into cooperation because before you decide let's go into it we need six weeks of procedures inside. And I think many of know, you know that if, if your phone called and would you like to join a project and you say well I have six weeks decision making, well by that time the place is taken by others. So how to make an organization agile uh, to be able to say, okay, well, let's, let's try and then we do decision making later. That's, an, that's a, a hard task. But I think Europe needs agility and needs, let's say, yeah, openness of mind. And paradoxically, you're more agile if you have a strategy. Mm -hmm. So you need to, 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 to think in advance and then you are more flexible when it comes to the operation. I think that's a very important. And what is also important is that what, that's what we learn from Germany. Germany is a, has a different way of organizing public, public service and has a different constitutional setting. That it's, it's, it's got really challenging mm -hmm. to discover that we in the Netherlands, we do things in a very different way than the Germans do. Mm -hmm. And they are also a rule of law uh, a state with, with, let's say, uh, a very good economic performance. So even differences in culture can be good in attaining the same, same successes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, like, I pick up on, on what you say about this agility and actually the more strategic you are, the more flexible and agile you can be. Has, have you, has this resonated at all in the implementation? Have you seen that, that it's, you know, you talked about discipline, you talked about rigor, mm -hmm. you talk, there's obviously needs to be some key planning in order to be able to manage all of those different parties that you spoke about. I think it's important is to say that they are administrative burdens, and you don't, uh, you have, to, can't say they aren't not. And I think this new generation of programs is also a lot of uh, complexity of state aid, of uh, intellectual um, uh, property rights, and of um, uh, audits. And you, and we try to simplify things, but mm -hmm. there are the regulations, there's the context, and we have to tackle it together. Mm -hmm. But and then I think we should be aware of that we are living in a microcosm, which is the European world. And there must be consensus, there must be compromises, and we have to work in this area. But it also means that we have success stories, that we can tackle the things together. And I think that, um, as I think everybody uh, said here, that um, sometimes you are not aware of the solution or of uh, an idea you get from someone else mm -hmm. um, and you're stuck in your own world and your own problems and I think this opening we all spoke about is something really important that you you can experience it but it makes really different a difference and I think that's what we we think there must be results there must be uh, a better way of doing things and that's what cooperation is about okay 
Let me, before I close this panel and ask for a final word from each of you, can I just give you a chance? Is anybody warmed up enough to dare to break the ice? Yes. Uh, yes no. Oh, you, hello. <laughs> you came and sat next to me. Last in, first with a hand in the air. Uh, hang on, wait. Oh, my God. You oh. weren't here for the... Eh? Oh, blimey, you've got a laptop. Okay, ready? Yes. Okay. Is it working? Uh, where, yes, where okay. are you from? My Who name are you? is Nicolas Petropoulos, coming from Greece, from the NGO uh, side. I just wanted to ask, from Interreg 4C to Interreg Europe, we have learned a lot and we have had enough to capitalize upon. Where we can find this now? Is it something that we can really uh, easily access in order to, you know, build upon? Well, I, yeah, I can say a word. I think this is a sort of introductory question yes. to what will be said and developed in a, in a further session about Indeed. policy learning platforms, because one of the uh, somehow specific features of this new Interreg Europe program is that we've tried all together with, uh, with all the partners of the program to introduce this idea of uh, building on uh, previous projects, results, uh, and at the same time to facilitate the access to uh, ideas that can be shared by different partners, potential partners, uh, through those so-called policy learning platforms. So for each of the thematic objectives that are, I suppose, behind me, uh, there will be a policy learning platform which will, which will be launched uh, this year. But you will get uh, many more details about, about those platforms in the in a further session. And uh, the person who is just close to you <laughs> is, no, just on your right side, yeah. This is the, this is the one, she's the one. So you were just slightly preemptively entering into the nitty gritty, but it was good, it was good nitty gritty. And by the way, just to be clear for everybody, th thematic, these thematic areas are these four colors here, not gouda, hashish, tulips, and whatever else came up in there, because <laughs> no, we did have, quite a few uh, salient themes that were scrolling there. So, if there are no more questions... Yes, one. Yeah, no one else, they don't dare, they don't want you to throw it at them. That's the point. That's why they're not putting their hand in the air. Okay, can I literally, in a cool 30 seconds, can you give a final takeaway message from your perspective, the presidency, what's Interreg Europe for you, and from each of your perspectives? What would your ideal outro be? Well, as I said before, I hope that m many of the initiatives will link to the uh, to the areas behind, um, including uh, the resources and circular economy. I, I dearly hope that uh, these kind of activities are not seen as sort of hit and run projects, but mm. um, I, I, I hope to, 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 to link it with, with, with this substance. Uh, I, I, I hope uh, that, that relationships are built with, this, with the help of the program that will, will last and, and, and will set out a, uh, a, a network of, uh, of, of communities in, in, in really working into, mm -hmm. uh, on these on this challenges. So the, um, the life after the project uh, is, I think, uh, as interesting as the the activities during the project itself. And, and secondly, I think the, um, what we see a lot in all these kinds of activities that the governance matters a lot. So uh, the governance to, to exchange and to learn from, from, from the governance aspects. aspects. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that is an urge for, for, uh, for local communities and so to be, to remain very much in, in, in involved in cities and in, in this kind of activities. Okay, all right. Can I Thank you. Okay, can I come to you? So you were talking, you were echoing again what he said, which is about these kinds of uh, very useful long-term friendships. It's not just the journey in itself, it's what comes afterwards yeah. and the legacy that What's, it leaves. Yeah, more than, yeah. than friendships, yeah. it's also business. Well, first business friendships <laughs> then, we'll say. Did you use the word friendship? I think you did. That's a good idea. Yeah, there we go. See. Or relationships. Relationships. What? It's even more. Though. Yeah. We're at a dating forum. We don't mind what word you use. This is this is what I have. Yeah. This is what I've decided. This is. Okay. Yes. Please do. Yeah. You, sir. Uh, well, I, I would invite you to be innovative, creative, to inspire your uh, dis decision makers, your politicians, your policy makers, whoever they are, uh, to uh, to make them understand that there is a 
an urgent need for a change of mindset. And that, uh, again, this is something that I know it not it doesn't always coincide with the, the life cycle of politicians in general. Mm. But, uh, of course, this is an issue, and I, I don't think we should uh, underestimate it. But I think at the same time, there is a minimum of risks that can be taken. And if there are too many big risks, then there would be a secretariat that will let you know that, no, sorry, your project is not mature enough or is you are not, you're not uh, necessarily on, on in the right direction. But try, try really to, to inspire them. And because, I mean, this is really where the big blockage is, is that there are ideas, there are sometimes maybe uh, ideas that, that can, uh, at first sight, look a bit, uh, a bit funny. But this is the way that you, you can really build uh, something new and that you can uh, find other ways to, to, to cope with issues and problems and so on. And this is, uh, the, the more I, I work in this, wor in this world of cooperation, the, the more I'm convinced that, this is, that it will be through, through your projects, through your ideas, through your initiatives, that maybe things are likely to change. Otherwise, we'll be stuck in this, uh, in this business as usual, you know, with very uh, rigid, strict, uh, administrative institutional formats. And I think that uh, everybody needs to, to be convinced that uh, things have changed over time, and particularly uh, during the 20, 25 last years, and that there is really a, a, a strong, a strong uh, even uh, now uh, uh, an urgency to think of it and to, to think how to build better knowledge, better capacity, better governance, as you were saying, to really adapt, to adjust to what uh, the, the, world, the world has become now. Okay, so your message again, in a way, is be the be inspiring multipliers. You yeah. use the word that they're yeah, possible, yeah, yeah, so yeah. be this it, is do, my, do yeah, the job. Yeah. This up. is my mantra. Mm. Oh, your mantra. Okay, <laughs> everybody's got a mantra on this panel. I like it. Yes, uh, your top line takeaway, please. Um, I'm going on a dating scene after this uh, session, uh, and just to do my offer, what we are looking for as regions that I want to develop financial instruments further, with or without ERDF, with or without SV, with or without institutional investors especially to scale up SMEs, that's one thing. The second thing is that we are new in circular economy and we look for uh, experiences of partners to, to, to think about how to organize industrial symbiosis at the, at the regional level, also with or without the RDF and all the others. And the third thing is I'm, I'm within the European Association of Border Regions, uh, leader of a task force on the future of Interreg. This is one of the other things of Europe. We've just started with Interreg yeah. 5, but we're already thinking about 6. So yeah. I'm, I'm also looking for Border Regions input to, uh, what, to, to, to enrich that thinking. So I will be around till 5. 4. Well, five. Five. Oh, wow. Is he staying an extra hour just so that you can enrich his well. thinking? Make sure you enrich his thinking. Or I'm yours, of course. Yeah. yeah. Or he will enrich yours. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And now to you, Anne. Finally, okay. your A lot away. of things have already been said. I think it's important that we create or we try to create the best possible framework for the cooperation program. I think you have a really good team, the technical secretariat on your side, uh, will help you at your service to do the best um, help you on this adventure, European adventure, to, uh, to go on. And I know that everybody speaks about simplification. It's not as easy as this, but I think it's a continuing progress and a process we are all aware of that and we try to improve things. Um, I think it's um, a lot also about results. I think this is something we have to have in mind um, because you spoke about the future and uh, the next um, generation, perhaps, and I think it's what we show, the real difference it makes, but in a simple and clear way. And I think we have to improve this, the communication also about what we achieve together. I think something is really important to show things and to, s to s um, show that co uh, cooperation makes a difference, really one. But I think you're right, practical, concrete outcomes speak a thousand words. And exactly. this is what people need to be inspired. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you to all four of you, Bart, Jean-Marc, Michiel and Anne. Uh, you, may, you may take your seats. Um, can we have a warm round of applause, please, for these gentlemen and ladies?